Hi, I'm Robert Reed. Today we're going to help you become more productive in Capture One while you're doing a tethering session by yourself. So when you're working on your own with a client, you want to make sure that Capture One is working for you and not against you. And in this video, we're going to be talking in particular about how to customize the tools and the tool tabs so that everything you need is right at your fingertips. In the previous video, we talked about creating a template for sessions, and that's going to be used as the foundation for our sessions. But it, you don't have to watch that before watching this video. They, you can do this in any order. But I recommend doing both of these and getting both of this set up. So when I do the next video in this series about actually shooting with the session, you can follow along with what I'm doing with that. So let's get started. The main thing we're going to be doing today is creating a new workspace. And workspaces are here under the window menu in Capture One, and there's workspace. And right now we are in the default workspace, which is basically all the tools available under this set of tool tabs right here. There's, this is for lens corrections, color controls, exposures, tools, and, and so on. So most of these aren't needed during actual tethering session. You're probably not going to be editing videos or doing color grading while your, your client is in front of you while you're shooting. So you can really trim out a lot of these tools to make things a little bit easier to figure out where things are. And actually conveniently, Capture One's already created a simplified setup for tethered capture right here in the workspaces. So I'm gonna start with this as a jump start to the ultimate workspace that I wanna have that's specific to this kind of tethering. Let's get started with the tools. So as you can see, this workspace has re already removed several of the tool tabs that we don't need. The color corrections are gone, the lens corrections are gone, and we just have some stripped down tabs over here that are simplified from what they normally are. This second tool though, the one with the camera, this is the main one I wanna focus on because this one already has several tools that are useful for tethering, so we can start with that. So the exposure evaluation is always useful to have, but I'm gonna talk about that when we actually start shooting with Capture One, so we can talk about that later, but it's useful to have here. The next one is the camera tool. This is definitely a must have because this is showing you the status of your connection with your camera and it confirms that you have a good connection. It'll show you the name of the camera there and then all the settings exposure settings and so on with the camera. And you can even expose, uh, the, click the shutter with that button there when there's a camera connected. So this is good to have. Camera focus, this really isn't useful when you're working by yourself because you're just doing focusing at the camera. You're not gonna be checking your focus and fine tuning it from the laptop. So we can uh, right click, or rather click on these uh, three dots and just remove this tool. So the camera settings tool is useful if you're gonna be modifying or checking the settings of your camera from Capture One. Chances are you're not, so I'm going to uh, remove this one as well. Next, capture naming. Uh, I talked about this in the previous video, and we actually customized the format here. This is useful to have in case you need to make any changes. So I will keep this. The next capture location is also useful, mostly because of the space left. This next capture adjustments um, can be good to have. Sometimes you want to tweak this during a session. Usually you just want to leave it to uh, defaults, but uh, it's good to have just in case. Overlay uh, most likely is not going to be needed. If you're working with an art director and they give you a template that you need to match with your, the composition of your shot so that your subject is not going to be covered up by a title or a logo or something, then overlay is useful. But most likely that's not something that's going to happen in every session. So I would remove that. And then Capture Pilot. Again, if you're working with other people on set and they need to follow along with an iPad, Capture Pilot is great. If you're on your own, probably not something that you're going to need. So I'll remove that as well. So this is uh, all the capture tools that you really need. I mean, mostly this is the key one, and these are a few others that are nice to have when you need them. But there's one more thing I want to add back in here because I want to make sure I can just stay on this tab all the time. So I'm going to add library here, and I'm actually uh, going to move it up here to the top. And now we can see, um, you know, we don't need the session folder so much. What I'm going to be, now this is the customized session as I did it in the previous video where I have several video, uh, several folders here that I'm going to be using to actually do the capture. So I want to be able to see those and make sure I'm in the right folder while I'm doing the capturing and I can see that confirmed with one look, the camera's connected and I'm in the right folder and then I can see the images right there. So this is where I generally stay most of the time during a session. It just stays like this. I can see where I'm going and I see where I'm at. It's kind of my dashboard for the session. There's one other change I want to make here. And over here in the Exposure tab, these are the normal tools in the Exposure tab. This is the white balance, the exposure, HDR tools, and so on. The one thing that was removed, though, in this customized workspace 
is the layers. And I'm going to add that back. So I'm going to just click up here, right click, add tool, and uh, layers right there. The reason I want layers here is so I can use the heel brush. And that's really for an emergency situation when a client comes in and has a blemish that they broke out that morning, they've got a pimple on their forehead, something that they're really freaked out about. That's something that they know, you know isn't normally there. So if I see that or sense that they're really concerned about something, I'll get a picture, bring them around to the computer, and then quickly demonstrate how you know, the heel brush works. In this case, just show them a quick and dirty demo of what it's going to look like when the retoucher is done with it. And just say this is, you know, this may not look perfect, but when the retoucher actually spends some real time doing this and doing it properly, everything is going to look just fine and you're going to look beautiful. So that's the main use for having this really close to hand. If there's a situation like that, I need to jump in here really quick and do a quick touch up of the heel brush. That's, um, this is really handy. That's uh, all the modifications I typically make for my sessions. A couple of other changes that have been made when we changed the workspaces already. Uh, up here in the toolbar, there's some changes. The uh, battery icon is available. So when you plug in a camera, you'll see the battery status of your camera there. And then there's the composition tool, which is something I'll talk about in a future video, which may or may not be very useful for the kinds of sessions that we do, but it's good to know that it's there. So the last step is to go to the Windows menu, the window menu, and click workspace uh, and uh, click on save workspace. So we're, I'm just going to say headshot tethered session or tethered is fine and save that. Now that that's saved, I can switch back to the default and get back to having all the tools available. And when it's time for a headshot session, I can go back and click that and it's customized for and ready to go for doing a headshot. Thanks for watching. I appreciate a subscription if you don't mind and click the bell so you're notified when I post the next video, which should be within a week or so. And that's it for now.